Welcome friends, James Corbett here from CorbettReport.com with your Fukushima update for the week of November 14th, 2011. It is currently the 15th of November 2011 here in Japan where it is 11, 11 a.m. Japanese Standard Time. No mystical significance, that's just when I started recording. So we are going to get straight into the first update of what has been a slew of updates in the last few days. So I certainly hope you are checking FukushimaUpdate.com on a daily basis. But let's start with this video provided by Euro News of a media press junket that the media got to do with the Fukushima Daiichi plant in the recent days to show the progress, quote-unquote, that's being made at the plant. And this is one of the videos that, that's come out in the last few days regarding this, and there's been a few, many, many others, as we'll see in the later updates. But let's watch this video from Euro News, which is here on Fukushima Update from November 12th, 2011. Seeking to improve Fukushima's tarnished image, the company behind Japan's notorious nuclear power plant has invited the cameras in to show how conditions for thousands of workers have improved since March, when an earthquake and tsunami set off meltdowns and explosions. Even still, this worker told reporters, the environment here has got much better, I think it's much more stable, but we have a long road ahead and we still don't know exactly what to expect. At the height of the disaster, all but 50 TEPCO workers were evacuated, but the situation is now stabilized enough for more than 3,000 to be there. They've restored cooling systems, repaired damaged buildings and machinery, and conducted decontamination tasks. However, it's estimated their long-term goal of safely closing down the plant will take at least another 30 years. Oh, 30 years to close down the plant. Well, at least they can get the media in for their little one-day press junkets. And um, and there are, as, as I say, a lot of updates to that story and a lot of related articles. For example, two of them here, one from My Nietzsche Daily and one from NHK, but we'll get into more in later updates. So that's, uh, again, that's buried on the second page now of FukushimaUpdate.com. Uh, we also have, of course, the daily updates, which are continuing to go up every single day, except for the one day where my computer crashed. There was no Fukushima update on that day. Um, we have this report of a, a rescue squad member who died from renal failure three months after internal radiation exposure and then some Fukushima updates for day 249 so let's move to the front page of Fukushima update as it exists right now on the 15th of November here in Japan we have Japanese physicist publishes Fukushima radiation records I'll t let you take a look at that for yourself just an interesting update from technology review which is an MIT journal um, photos of Fukushima 1 uh, from the media tour. Th I thought this was really interesting. It was up on XSKF, so of course you can click over to XSKF for the original. But there are some pictures, uh, some quite startling pictures. For example, this one of Reactor 4, and uh, this one of one of the workers listening to Goshi Hosono, the new minister in charge of the nuclear accident. Um, and this uh, links back to Cryptome.org. I really suggest that you click on that link and take a look at all of these photos. Uh, they're quite quite amazing, quite startling photos. So, um, so very interesting. And of course, that leads into this related article from Japan Times, Fukushima number one tour and eye opener. Absolutely very interesting article talking about the... Uh, so-called safe zone and uh, and the way that the uh, the media were picking up on the well nervousness of the employees etc on this little media press uh, junket that they did so some very interesting stories coming out of that which i will let you explore on your own time uh, we also have an anti-nuclear demonstration in Fuku fukuoka which is in uh, uh, kyushu and this comes from youtube user aluminum studios so let's go and take a look at this I just got a last minute email, so I grabbed my camera and hopped on a train. There's a really large anti nuclear demo here in Fukuoka City, Fukuoka Prefecture, on uh, November 13th. So it's about noon right now, and I just arrived, and they're expecting over 10,000 people. All right, I'll let you uh, take a look at that video for yourself, and of course you can click through to go back to Aluminum Studios. We also have some related articles on this review by Nika from FukushimaDiary.com and uh, a Japan Times article on the protest. But as Aluminum Studios notes, it's a hopeful sign that there are more and more people protesting. 
And also we have a new scientific study on cesium-137 contamination, which links through to a study that was just published uh, here on PN pnas.org, and another uh, study on radionuclide distribution in Japan, showing the various uh, radionuclide iodine-131 or cesium-137, etc., uh, using this map as a reference, and this was just published again on pnas.org, so I hope you take a look at that. So that's really the, uh, the, the latest posts on Fukushima update. Again, I hope you're checking on a daily basis. Let's just check the last daily update, day 249, which was posted last, last night. And uh, the top story from NHK test, uh, taking thyroid tests to the children in Fukushima, talking about a plan to continue testing of uh, children and their thyroid functions, because of course we know that's one of the main health risks in an event like this. And then a slew of uh, updates from enenews.com, including some quite startling ones um, the, uh, about the harmless, quote-unquote, xenon cloud that's known to cause dramatic increases in lung cancer. And uh, one really interesting one about a Fukushima worker saying, my shoes melted instantaneously when near reactor. Oh, I'm sure that's all part of the staged, managed, controlled, perfectly all right uh, shutdown that they want us to believe, right? Um, also some, some other uh, ones. Uh, one that I found interesting, a lot of people have been talking about the, uh, the radioisotopes that have been found out over, over Europe. The Register has one with a very uh, very forceful title, Many Mystery Radioisotopes in Czech Are Not from Fukushima. So uh, asking the question, who has a secret nuclear plant? And it basically just goes to show, uh, quote the IAEA chief who's saying that, uh, that no, it can't be from Fukushima, but doesn't say why that is. But at any rate, I thought the comments on this article were also interesting, so I suggest you check them out, talking about um, possible links to Iran or to other, uh, a Swedish nuclear fire that took place recently. So lots of different possibilities regarding that, uh, that those radionuclides over uh, Europe at the moment, and I don't know, so I'll let you decide for yourselves. At any rate, that's the latest for Fukushima update. Once again, thank you for all of your support, and thank you for all of the tips that you continue to send in through the contact. It's much appreciated.